This week we've got some details on the new inventory system and a nice location-based sprint report. It's both a big update and an important one. Plus, have you seen this infographic? Because it certainly pertains to the update. Let's dive in and see what's what and what kind of extra information we can dig up on this week's topic. Trust me, this week's episode is going to be thick. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Before I start, I'd like to thank my newest patron, The Huntress. Now before we talk about the external inventory, let's lay out what this inventory system even is. So first, you have your personal inventory, accessed via the personal inner thought system. This inventory is a natural extension of the system that allows you to access items on your person, things like food, drinks, weapons, consumables, and mineables that you've picked up. The system was added back in 3.7. Ship inventories are a bit blocked off now and mainly consist of cargo, ammo, and fuel that you've had sent to your ship. None of these items are interactable yet, but plan to be as the corresponding gameplay is introduced into the game. External inventories partially capture your ship inventory, but also refer to things like backpacks, vehicles, your hangar, and boxes. And while backpacks do seem to be included in the personal inventory section of the video, I think they play a bit of a hybrid role here. These are all items in which you'll be able to place your extra stuff for storage and transfer, and we've been looking at the slow evolution of this whole system ever since 3.0. All inventory systems fall under the global persistence umbrella, which is currently being worked on, but that's a topic for another video. It's also a really big deal. Now, while many perceive these external inventories to be a boring subject, the implications of them are anything but. Having the ability to finally store objects inside of other objects is going to lead to a lot more expansive interactability with objects and players. And with this new update, things seem to be far and beyond what they were previously. You can see that you can now group items together, split grouped items to move a small amount of them, quickly read your inventory capacity and percentage filled, and easily move items to and from different inventories. And while the current display of objects doesn't look great right now, it has been confirmed they will see additional work to bring them to a proper level of quality. The one thing I'm curious about is how much inventory management in the future will be done in these menus versus diegetically in the game, which has always been a big focus in Star Citizen. Moving on anyways, the fact that you can store multiple drinks and foods in the backpacks or in the future in boxes and transport them around means somebody's going to be a sucker that has to grab all the food for the voyage and store it on the ship. We'll probably be pulling straws for that on my own live streamed community events. With ship persistence though, this means storing and using food on your ship will now become a reality. It also means the same for gems and other things found on planets as well. Could we possibly start collecting and selling things to player characters outside of the kiosk system? And to add to that, we could now see Greycat rock mining expeditions with multiple players assigned to mining, transporting, and selling the minerals. A complete and constant money printing machine. These implications are wild. I can feel the ghost of emergent gameplay future approaching. For new players, I'd like to leave a little information here. The inventory quick access system is now at tier 1. The original minimal system introduced in 3.7 was tier 0. Now we've moved forward and will continue to progress until the feature is deemed complete. And there will always be work being done on this feature as is with many features we don't know about in the background much like what we saw just a few months ago in reference to inventories. The next section of this video was a b-roll jam-packed montage of location-based updates starting with cargo decks, a 3.11 edition we've been seeing for several months and hearing about in the monthly reports. But that's not why we're here. 
The lesser explored refinery decks were the real show off. With a lot of effort put into the world building of the areas, these decks are shaping up nicely as a very industrial segment of the verse. Here are some comparison shots with what we saw from the locations back in June. Notice the increased detail and new smelter drums, an improvement incorporated while moving from white box to gray box. Next we got to see some ground shaders and painting tools that allow new geological features to be laid over the rather lackluster details of before. This has led to a much more natural look of rocks, material transitions, and ground textures than we previously had. Yet another great improvement being made to the planetary tech that Star Citizen continues to master. These improvements have already been applied to the star system that we know is currently being made, the Pyro system. We also got another look at the locales of the Pyro system with some updated textures and objects. Look at these beautiful freaking gradients, can somebody call Bob Ross? Now keep in mind, just as with older shots we've seen of different areas in Pyro, these areas may still be placed in a scenario that does not reflect the final atmospheric design, meaning different colors and visibility. That being said, the new material styles which were only made in the last few months go a long way to show how well the technology has progressed in quality and speed. And believe it or not, we have confirmation that this is nowhere near the final iteration on this moon or any others in the game. There will still be improvements made in the painting methods to be used, among other things, in the near future. Now here is the big kahuna, in my opinion. NPC villages have been something we've been looking out for and having teased to us for years now. And after being shelved for quite some time, we've seen the initial 2D drawing shown off several weeks ago now being moved to the 3D modeling stage. With such progression, I think we can expect this feature to be included in the first half of next year. Yet another addition you won't see on the roadmap but is still clearly seeing work done in the background. Hmm. These locations are meant to be small stop-off areas in the wilderness of moons and underdeveloped planets much like what you might find in a game like Outer Worlds. In addition to these areas needing to be used in various biomes like ice, desert, volcanic, or jungle areas, they also need to feature the proper materials and designs to sell the time and also the specific planet they are located on, as in being sourced from the local materials of that planet. Now as I said, the time of construction is important to take note. Doubling back on that, Listen to this statement. At this stage, one of the main things we're looking for in fleshing out this colonial architectural vibe visually is that it looks like it can survive in many different climates. Have you ever seen this page? If not, I highly suggest you check out my video detailing the various architectural styles of Star Citizen in the top corner and the video description. If you have, then you know colonial architecture has a place in the game, and this is the very first implementation of it. We've seen utilitarian and high-tech. Now we are about to see a new genre of infrastructure that will be built upon and expanded. Not only that, we can assume from this that the other styles of architecture seen on this graphic will be applied to other forms of settlements like military bases, small cities, and possibly even other small villages. So keep in mind, this is not the end of the architectural variety we will see applied to these locations. The work looks great so far, and I can't wait to see how they will continue to develop as we move into the new year and closer to a full implement- oops. Huh. I don't know how this one snuck in here. <laughs> Anyways, let's hope to get some good use out of visiting locations like these and not just some more eye candy. This was a really good episode of Inside Star Citizen. And as I mentioned last week, it looks like the next update will be focused on cargo decks and the gameplay that they bring to the game. So I look forward to that. And after that, I think we'll be seeing a break from these weekly episodes until the 3.12 update kicks into development high gear. 
In the meantime, I suggest you check out the giveaway in the video description where you can win an Anvil Pisces at the end of the month, and a 135C at the end of next month. I also host multiple giveaways on my Twitch streams on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays where you have about a 1 in 20 chance of winning either money or ships. Link in the video description. Heck, I'll be online right after this video goes live, so come check it out. Oh, and that reminds me, if you have never played the game or have only played once or twice, I'm hosting newcomers on my Discord server every Wednesday where we play together and I show you the ropes and help you learn more about the game. And then I send you on your way with a purse full of credits. So come join and let's play. Or you could join my Discord server and play with our whole group any day of the week. Finally, and I promise I'm all done after this, Patreon is a huge part of how I'm able to continue to provide you with quality content every week. If you'd like to support me and receive exclusive photos, extended cinematics, and early videos, consider heading over there. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me for this one. I hope you learned something new here, and I hope to see you next week.